Good evening, people. Welcome back to my channel. I am UndeadSick83, your governor of movie reviews. And since it's Sunday, it's time to do another movie review. And today we are going to talk about one of my all-time favorite movies of all time. And my second favorite Western movie of all time. I'm just gonna reveal the title right away there is no sense in delaying this today we are going to talk about discuss and review Sergio Corbucci's masterpiece the great silence or il grande silencio all right so yes that's the movie that we're going to talk about tonight i'm very excited about it i hope you are too so sit back and enjoy. <clears throat> All right. So I hope you will enjoy this review discussion. Um, I hope you have fun and uh, let's go. Let's get right into it. So yes, tonight we are going to talk about the great silence, Il Grande Silencio. Um, I'm just going to say right off the bat, this is a fantastic film. Fantastic film. But more on that later. <laughs> more on that later. Um, so, let's talk a little bit about the story first. What is The Great Silence about? Alright, so, The Great Silence is basically, it takes place in the Old West, of course. And The Great Silence is about a mute cowboy... Uh, a mute lone cowboy, I should say, who arrives in a snowy mountain village and quickly crosses paths with a group of bounty hunters. Now, first of all, at first he doesn't really want anything to do with these people, um, but later on he finds out that at least... Uh, a woman approaches him. He meets a woman uh, who also lives in the village who approaches him and basically asks him to take out this alien, uh, this alien, basically asks him to take out this group of bounty hunters. I just saw the group, I just saw the book of Boba Fett people. So I I'm like alien bounty hunters, but actual bounty hunters. Um, Rewind that. Um, but no, at first he doesn't want to have anything to do with all of these people. Um, but then he is approached by this woman uh, who wants him to take out this group of bounty hunters um, because the bounty hunters have killed her husband. Um, and that's basically how the whole story starts to unfold and how the narrative is like kicking off and um, and what then starts is a very 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 great story um so that's that's the narrative for the great silence for this film um so i just have to say this first um this movie was directed by sergio Corbucci, of course um, it came out in 1968, of course. It stars Jean-Louis uh, Trintijan, Klaus Kinski, uh, Fonetta, Fonetta McGee, McGee, I can't pronounce that right, Fonetta McGee, uh, Frank Wolf, Louis Pistilli, Lu Luigi Pistilli. So, great cast. So... Why do I think that this movie is such a masterpiece? Because it is. This movie is a masterpiece. The same as Once Upon a Time in the West. You know, this movie is just fantastic. It is a piece of art. This is a piece of art. Um, and everyone should see this. So why do I think this movie is so great? Why do I hold this movie in such high regards all right let's dive into that all right um first of all i would like to give you a little bit of a backstory 
um, and a little con con uh, ugh, context to this film, I would like to go back and dive a little bit into the history of Sergio Kabuchi and, and just the, con the context for this film, the concept, okay? So, um, so Sergio Kabuchi uh, basically got the idea for this film uh, when he was shooting Django. And I think everybody knows Django. I mean, Django is another one of those. It's a masterpiece. It's a fantastic Western. Uh, but he came up with the concept for this film when he was shooting Django. Because originally, uh, Corbucci wanted Django to be set in the snow. Um, but the producers and the studios, the Italian studios, they basically, they basically said no, nope, nope. Uh, they said no because they felt like they felt like it was too expensive to have a western with snow in it. So basically, they were like, "That's gonna cost us too much money." Um, so basically, uh, w with that concept for Django, the studios and the producers said no, um, and Corbucci basically then demanded. Uh, that this is basically what he said. He demanded, okay, okay, I can't get snow. We can't have snow. Okay, I want mud. I want lots and lots of mud. Um, and and apparently he won because Django has lots of mud. Django has Django has lots of wet dirty mud <laughs> which which works very well by the way it works so great i mean like the town in in django it's like it looks fantastic but anyway um but yeah so basically he did django he was shooting django um and then basically django became such a big success that the studios and the producers finally allowed him uh, to make the movie that he wanted to make, which is this film. So, you know, just to have a little bit of context and, and you know, backstory as to where The Great Silence has its origin story, okay? So, why do I love this movie so much? Why do I love The, uh, the Grand Silence? Again, I can't speak. Rewind. So, why do I love this movie so much? Why I think this movie should be so high regarded, okay? Let's dive into that. The first thing is the cinematography. <clears throat> the first thing that I really really love about this film is the cinematography the way everything looks i mean the snowy scenery is absolutely beautiful um you know this film was shot in the uh, in the swiss alps they shot this film in the swiss alps uh, near a ski resort um so they shot it in the in the swiss alps uh, in the region of uh, Veneto and South Tyrol. Um, and it really, really shows because, you know, the cold atmosphere, uh, it, it works completely. Um, you know, it has great atmosphere. You know, you feel like you're, you're in winter. You know, you feel cold throughout this entire film. You feel like, you feel like you're freezing. So... The whole environment with the Swiss Alps and stuff, the cold atmosphere, it works completely. Um, also, like the white rugged landscapes uh, look totally stunning, you know, uh, with the, uh, the, the, the cliffs and the canyons and just the mountains and stuff like that. It all looks like, it looks fantastic. It looks fantastic. It's totally stunning. Um, you know, the scene at the start, 
I'm going to name one scene. The scene at the start where uh, the main character, Silence, uh, you know, rides through the snow um, in, in the distance, right? And you have like this white shot. There is this white shot um, of him riding through, riding through the snow, like with the mountains and, and the trees and stuff in the background. It, it is a fantastic shot. It is fantastic. It feels great and it feels magical and it just, it works. It really, really works. And the movie is full of that. The movie is filled with this kind of scenery. There is also a great shot of some like, uh, of some uh, people on horses, uh, the, the bounty hunters. You know, riding through the snow, and they are in a blizzard. So you can see, like the the horses struggling, you know, to get through the snow. And there is like, uh, it's very it's very shady because all of this snow is like blowing around, and it's like the scenery is absolutely gorgeous. So uh, top notch for the cinematography. That's one of the main things why I love this film so much. <clears throat> Alright. Another thing that I think is top notch in this film is the acting. The acting in this film is, is amazing. The acting is amazing it's brilliant absolutely brilliant especially Jean-Louis Trintigian um what here's here's the thing what Jean-Louis Trintigian does with his role as silence is absolutely remarkable to me it's absolutely remarkable to me you know a lot of people don't know this but Acting in itself is difficult enough, but when you play a character that uh, that can't speak, when you play a character that is a mute, um, it creates even bigger challenges because the role gives you limitations. The role has limitations. So you have to work with things like you know, bodily, uh, you know, body language and, and eye contact and which, which can be very tough to do, which can be very tough to do, you know, just acting with your body and eye, con eye contact and just facial expressions and stuff. Um, that, that can be very tough to do. Uh, but Trinity Jean makes it work. I mean, Trintijan makes it work. He knocks it out of the park with this role. And it's such a delight to see. It's such a delight to see an actor be so submerged in, in his persona, in his character. And it's, it's yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Absolutely, absolutely great. The other actor that is absolutely fantastic in this film is Klaus Kinski, the legendary Klaus Kinski. Um, you know, Klaus Kinski, great actor, one of the best actors in the European Italian industry, probably. Um, and Klaus Kinski in this film this is probably Klaus Kinski's best role ever. This is Klaus Kinski's best role ever, probably. Um, he portrays uh, a character named Loco, of course, uh, the the main bounty hunter, the leader of the of the gang of the pack, and you know he plays. The uh, Loco is the uh, the extremely ruthless and and sadistic leader of the bounty hunters. And Kinky does Kinky. What what is my what is with my speaking today? I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a little tired. I, 
maybe it's that. But um, but Kinski does a fantastic job portraying this very charming, uh, but also very self-assured, uh, but very very dangerous hitman. You know, gun for hire. Um, it's an absolutely sublime performance and it's one of it's one of Klaus Kinski's best roles and um, it's it's one of the best villains we have seen in a spaghetti western for sure so yeah <clears throat> the last one that I want to talk about in terms of acting is Fonetta McGee Fonetta McGee um, Vanetta McGee stars as the black and vengeful widow, uh, Pauline Middleton. Pauline? Pauline. Pauline Middleton. Um, so, yeah, she's the, uh, Pauline Middleton is this, you know, black and vengeful widow who wants, you know, these bounty hunters out of the way, uh, for killing her husband, um, and... Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Vonetta McGee is just as beautiful as Claudia Cardinal uh, was in Once Upon a Time in the West. <laughs> she really is. She really is. Vonetta McGee is absolutely beautiful in this film. She is, <laughs> she's just as gorgeous as Claudia Cardinal in... Once upon a time in the West, um, you know. But I have to say, you know, she's she's not just beautiful, okay? She's not just great to look at because because Pauline Middleton is a very gentle and caring character who has the persona of of wanting everybody safe and and kind of takes a pity on 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 uh, on silence the main character who she develops a romantic relationship with um and and you know what for a for a black woman you know b back in the 60s i'm talking about the 60s back in the 60s it was hard enough for black people to get any movie roles in in the uh in the film industry the fact that Sergio Corbucci uh you know chose Vonetta McGee for this role that says it all that says it all and you know the it, it, you know her her character got a lot of backlash back in the day her character got a lot of backlash back in the day for uh, developing a uh, you know a romance with the main character who is white, um, so yeah things were very tricky back then. So, but um, let me tell you something. You know, I never had that problem with this film. I never had that problem with this film because the story is so great, and you are so inv invested in these characters. You know, you are so enticed with the characters and invested, you know, in their fates that, you know, you, you, you don't care. You don't care. She is just another character in this film. She, she's just a character in this film. And it really works. And she is a fantastic character. Um, you know, I love pa Pauline Middleton. She is a fantastic character. She is just as strong um, and, uh, you know, and capable as Claudia Cardinal uh, from Once Upon a Time in the West. And uh, it's just, yeah, I mean, she, she, she performs, you know, she, she gives a great performance. She gives everything. Vanetta McGee throws herself entirely into this role. And... Uh, it it really it really shows it really shows because she is a she's a beautiful character beautiful character so so yeah um 
I have one more thing I want to talk to you about. <clears throat> the last thing I want to talk about with you for this film, what I love about this film anyway, um, the last thing I want to say what I love about this film is, of course, I mean, we have to mention the music, right? We have to mention the music. We have to talk about the score. Search, uh, you know, we have to talk about the score. Ennio Morricone is a maestro. You know, Ennio Morricone is a, a true maestro. He made some of the best soundtracks out there. Um, you know, and for this film, Ennio Morricone's soundtracks, you know, they always work in the context of the film, of, of the films that he's doing, right? His soundtracks are always very, you know, um, they ver they're very resonating uh, throughout the, the, the context of the film, right? And his music in The Great Silence, in Il Grande Silencio, his score in The Great Silence is very slow and it's very um, uh, melancholic, right? Um, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, how do I put this? Um, like I said, it's it's very slow, melancholic. Um, it has a bit of a sad tone to it. Um, the score the score actually looks a lot like the music from uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. The big difference with that film is that the music in this movie um, is it has much more. Um, it has much sadder undertones. It, it has a much more sad flavor to it. Um, you know, he makes you... The music that he's making, he makes you feel that you are heading for tragedy and heartbreak. That's, that's what he's doing with this score. He makes you feel like you're in for, like, a, a, you know... A, a huge amount of, uh, you know, tragedy and there is heartbreak coming and, and, you know, big emotions, big, you know, emotional moments are coming. That's what he's doing with this. That's what he's doing with this score. That's what he's setting up with this music. You know, it's almost, it's almost like a, it's almost like a Greek play or something, right? A, a, a Greek play or a, you know, Roman tragedy tale. It, it's just the music, it really, the music forebodes grief and, 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 and sadness and, and heartbreak. Um, and he does a phenomenal job laying that groundwork for, um, for the film he does an amazing job laying the groundwork uh, for the viewers as well because you know as we go through the movie you know as we as we go through the music and we take um and we take in the images in contrast to the music um we can really feel like like this is going to be heavy this is going to be a heavy emotional film. And it really is. It really is. It really gets that way in certain ways. So, so yeah, big applause for um, Ennio Morricone. His soundtracks are, are some of the best out there. His, out, his soundtracks are some of the best out there. So, um... So those are all things I love about this film. Does this movie have any negatives? Uh, do I have any gripes with this film? Yes, of course, this movie has negatives. I mean, you know, no movie is perfect. Every movie has issues. Uh, this one does as well. 
um, and I'm going to talk to you about those now, okay? <clears throat> because um, it's not just simply a gripe or a negative that I want to give to this film. It's more, it's more like an afterthought. Um, and it's more like a, a piece of advice for, you know, upcoming viewers who are going to see this film for the first time, okay? Alright, so, the one thing that I would say about Sergio Corbucci's The Great Silence, Il Grande Silencio, the one thing that I would say about this film is that the ending of this film, the ending of this movie, might just be too bleak for certain viewers. That that's it. That's it. the 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 ending of this movie it might just be too depressing for a lot of the pe for a lot of people who are going to watch this film, um, because the ending of this movie. Um, is very much a downer. The the ending of this movie is very much a downer, um, and and that is certainly not for everyone. That is certainly not for everyone. And and I know what you guys are going to say, like, but you know, but spaghetti westerns, you know, they usually have bad endings. Yes, that's true. That's absolutely true. But this, but this movie takes it to another level. This movie takes it to a whole other level. And, you know, that just might not be everyone's cup of tea, to be honest. This, this movie might be too dark and gritty uh, when it finishes for a lot of people. And, and that's, that's the main thing that I would say about this film. That would be... I think that would be the biggest negative and the biggest gripe for most people, for a lot of people, um, that the ending of this movie is just not, um, you know, let's just say it's not rainbows and kisses. <laughs> let's just say that. Uh, let's just say that it's not rainbows and kisses and sunshine. It's um, I'm not going to spoil things, but. It's it's a very bleak and dark ending, and um, that's that simply is not for everyone. So there you have it. That is my that is why uh, that is my one takeaway, my one gripe, my only negative about this film. So I think I pretty much talked about everything I wanted to talk about here. So in closing, in closing. In closing, how do I feel about Sergio Corbucci's The Great Silence? How do I feel about Il Grande Silencio? I absolutely love this film. I absolutely love this film. I think it's a it's it's a pretty much perfect film. It's a wonderful piece of art. Um, it, it's just, it's amazing. I really, really love this film. This is actually, this, I say it again. This is my second favorite Western of all time. Um, you know, everything works. It's dark, cynical, pessimistic, and very, very sad. I'll say that again. This is a Western that is very dark, very cynical, very pessimistic, and very, very sad. And that's the reason I love this film. Because, you know, it really, really works. For, for this film, it really delivers the goods. And Carbucci does something here that wasn't very well known or accepted at the time and you know that was of course that was firstly 
you know, setting a Western in, in the snow, um, but also telling, you know, almost a Greek tragedy like story, um, which takes a very dark turn. So Sergio Corbucci did something here that wasn't very well known or accepted at at that t at that point in time, and uh, I think it's I think it's a very brave and bold film, and I really think Sergio Corbucci he he should be applauded for that because you know in in modern day cinema in modern day cinema you you know you simply can't make these type of films anymore, you simply can't make these type of films anymore. Um, as a matter of fact, at some point, there was talk of a American remake, which was going to star uh, Clint Eastwood. Um, it was going to be produced by uh, Zanuck, uh, Richard Zanuck, I believe it was, um, who, of course, also produced uh, Jaws. Um, I think it's Richard Zanuck anyway, but anyway, it's Zanuck. Zanuck was the producer. Um they were going to do an, an American remake, which never really worked out because Clint Eastwood did end up making a Western in the Snow, uh, which is called, uh, it was called Joe Kid, um, and it's a terrible movie. <laughs> it, it's a horrible movie. It's terrible. And not to, like, discredit Clint Eastwood in any way, but... It's a bad film. It's a bad film. It's nowhere, you know, it's nowhere on the same level of this film here. So, so yeah, um, that's my fin final say about this film. I absolutely love this one. Second favorite Western of all time. And I think it's a wonderful piece of art uh, that everybody has to see. Look, if you are a true movie fan... If you are a real movie fan, you have to watch this at least once, all right? You have to watch this at least once. You owe it to yourself, and you also owe it to the history of film to check this one out, because it's, it's, a, it's a great film. It's a great film. So, there you go. Um, my rating for this film... It's, it's a very easy one. My rating for Sergio Corbucci's The Great Silence or Il Grande Silencio, my rating for this film, I'm going to give Sergio Corbucci's masterpiece a 9.5 out of 10. Again, a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, this is just a sublime, phenomenal film. And again, if you are a movie fan, you owe it to yourself to, to watch this. And if you are a movie collector like me, um, then you have to have this in your collection. Um, especially if you are into Westerns or Spaghetti Westerns. So if you are a movie fan, go and watch Sergio Corbucci's The Great Silence. If you are a movie collector, pick up this film. It's from Eureka Films, uh, Masters of Cinema. Um, so there you have it. The Great Silence, 9.5 out of 10. That's my rating for this film. But let me know in the comment section down below, what did you think? Have you seen The Great Silence? Have you not seen it? If you did see it, uh, did you love it as much as me? Or did you hate it? If you did hate it, tell me why. We can discuss and debate. Um, do you agree with my points? Do you disagree? Again, if you disagree, tell me why. We can discuss and debate. Do you have any? Do you have any TV shows or movies that you want to recommend for uh, to me for me to watch and review? Let me know in the comment section down below. I want to know your thoughts, opinions, theories, ideas, as always. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll be back with another video as soon as possible, of course. Everybody stay safe and healthy as always. 
Have a good week, and I see you guys. Bye.